Jane Manningham, an Academy Award nominee for uh, leading the, the team in, in doing all the Iron Man uh, films, and Peter Weir Clark, a genius mechanical creature effects designer. And we have spent the last three days alongside uh, Melissa uh, Goldman and Eric Schmidt and Stephen Warner down in the workshop down there, uh, running these these uh, students ragged. They've had literally um, from conception to what you see before you was two and a half furious days. Uh, we said to them, okay, here's what you've got. You have to design a creature. Uh, it has to be non-human in form, but it has to have at least one human inside and involve uh, the rest the rest of the team in helping to puppeteer. And uh, they came up with these six creatures. And we're going to do a little creature fashion show for you. And uh, I have descriptions here uh, to, to tell you a little bit about um, these creatures' history and biology and mating practices. <laughs> That's what I'll focus on, is the mating practices. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we start out? Um, shall we start out with... Slog is, uh, is from the planet... And uh, slog can typically be found in bogs and marshy lands. Uh, the slog is a predator and, and captures and kills its victims in a variety of ways. Slog can kill you in a variety of ways. Uh, the tail, which you see, um, can bludgeon you, uh, its prey, and the long tentacles, uh, actually the dorsal tentacles, can poison their prey. Um, the, the slog's tongue, as you see, has a pincher at the end, allowing it to grip its food and uh, pull it into its mouth. Um, the slog, as you see, has illuminated eyes, allowing it to see in the dark making it a force to be reckoned with whether day or night. You're never safe from slog. This creature is Test Tube 372. Uh, Test Tube 372 was, was a very promising experiment carried out at UVA. Um, a, a DNA strand was found floating in the upper stratosphere, origin unknown, and was combined with a protein mixture in a centrifuge as part of an ongoing cancer research experiment. Uh, within minutes, this particular creature grew in size to the size of a small dog, uh, and, and about an hour later it was 12 feet tall. Um, the creature feeds on hapless college, hapless college students. You see its suction mouth is inhaling a, a student there. Um, and, and He's handling it well. I thought I'd be hearing screams, and, but he seems to be handling his consumption quite well. Um, and then they, they eat their uh, victims alive through the suction arm, and, and then they use, you can see there's one in its belly right now, um, they'll use the still living human uh, to activate the, the musculature for his own. Ah! <laughs> so you see what looks like a guy on stilts is really a, a half digested human being. Um, uh, the creature um, you see before you, which we reanimated just for tonight, was actually killed uh, a few weeks ago um, by a fearless combination of art, architecture, and drama students um, by popping its eyeball. Uh, the eyeball contains the heart as well as the uh, the, um, the seeing mechanism. Um, although they did preserve a strand of its DNA and it was returned to the lab for future research thanks to a generous research grant. Sarah's Bertismus is this sort of wedge-shaped creature. And it has a very distinctive mating call. Um, you can call him Quincy. Uh, Quinceros is, is a little bit too formal for, for Quincy. Um, he was born naked and defenseless in a corn maze at the county fair. Um, Quincy quickly climbed the corporate ladder and amassed a small fortune speculating on pork belly futures. Um, Quincy now spends his time translating medieval German manuscripts into English. And as president of his charity, which seeks to teach disadvantaged young moving creatures important life skills, like hunting for truffles, tying a bow tie, and pouring stiff gin and tonic. Um, Quincy loves travel um, and roasting s'mores on his gigantic heated horn. Uh, the horn is great at uh, thermal conduction. And he, and he loves long walks through the fields, through fields of lavender with his best friends, 
uh, which is a monkey named uh, Clippo. Uh, and as Quincy slowly works his way back to his nesting area, um, I'd like to introduce our next creature, um, the Silver Mouth Clam. You see him there against the brick wall, his eyeballs surveying the courtyard, and he's slowly coming forward. Now, everyone knows about Godzilla, the mutated lizard that came out of the Marshall Islands. What most people don't know is that clams were also affected by this, the same nuclear testing. And this, this here is the silver mouth clam. It's a species of giant mutated clam that has finally arrived here in Charlottesville. Um, the silver mouth uh, lives on land for most of its life. And, and silver mouth clam, if you would, please, please um, parade your way into the center of the courtyard if possible. It looks like we might have a, a medical um, emergency. Okay, here he comes. Um, he lives on land for most of its life, but he starts as a larva in, in large bodies of water and returns to the water to reproduce. Um, the silvermouth clam spends most of its time on or near beaches. Uh, this is where it hunts its favorite prey, humans. Uh, the silvermouth hides on the beach in its compressed form, which you saw at the very beginning, uh, and then it and then it springs up when prey walks past and scoops up uh, its prey into its mouth with, it, with its, um, its pincers there. Uh, to reproduce, the silver mouth detaches that roving eyeball, um, which is really the larval stage of its young. And uh, the larva lives in water until it can grow its own body. Uh, the, the mother, the eyeless mother, then uh, reproduces asexually to, to grow another eye for herself. Uh, and this is when the adult silvermouth is most vulnerable. Next, I'd like to introduce Elephino, pronounced Helifino. <laughs> um, its origins are unclear, uh, but suspected that it's an undiscovered Earth super beast. Uh, it's asexual. Um, it, it forms its own larva, uh, which is very handy because, you know, the dating scene is tough for the Helifinos. Uh, social patterns, it's a loner. Uh, it's, a, it's an alpha predator. It, it takes on defensive and aggressive behavior displays upon encountering uh, potential enemies or prey. It's nomadic. It's always on the move. And, and can, it can live really in all environments, uh, including oceanic, subterranean, mountainous environments, grasslands. Uh, it, it does avoid populations in urban settings, however. Uh, the key attributes of the uh, Helifino um, are the inverted knees that you see in the back there, um, giving the creature exponentially greater leg and hindquarter power. It also allows the creature to stand vertically. Uh, maybe we can see it sort of rear up slightly, but this one seems to be foraging, so, so uh, I don't know if it understands English. Um, this, this is a, it also can move uh, with its back parallel to the ground, which is handy, and it enables the, the creature to swim with strong rear propulsion. Those legs come, come in handy in many ways. Uh, next up, we have the, the beguiling Riti Pooj. Riti Pooj. Everyone say Riti Pooj. Love that word. Uh, she's a female, um, a winged female. She's lovely. And uh, she lives in the ocean that exists below the ice crust of Jupiter's moon Io. Um, Riti Pooj is a carnivore, and she sort of flies along the ocean floor, preying on small seafloor dwelling beasts. Um, she used her, her, her snake-like tongue to find her prey, sort of like antenna, and I think it's sort of a smelling, there's an there's a olfactory component to it. Um, uh, even if they're hidden, that, that tongue helps her find creatures uh, in, in the crevices uh, on the ocean floor. And using her tail, her pronged tail there, she'll fish out her prey and, and devour it. Uh, 